Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Full Tank Motorcycle Podcast. My name's Rob from the YouTube channel Moto Bob, and I'm joined with my good friend Tim, regular on the Moto Bob channel, host of Urban Rider, and let's not forget CEO of his own channel, Verified Road. Now, we've got plenty of new bike news to discuss this week, as well as our now regular segments. Comment and bike of the week. But Tim, to kick us off, I want to know from you, can you break down what you would say is your perfect motorcycle? And I'm not talking like dream bike, Panigale, or, you know, that kind of like create. I'm not just saying like the fastest, lightest, most expensive. Okay. I'm just saying like, if you're going to go okay. and buy a bike, yeah, the perfect bike, what would it start with? It, like, let's start with the engine. It's got to be the engine. I'm talking like it's a great road engine. bike. Power levels, yeah. engine configuration. Mm. What are you thinking? Probably a forty-eight cylinder, um, <laughs> <laughs> high revving, loud. Uh, needs a, a backup motor to get it started in the first place. No, so for me, uh, probably it's probably a twin. I mean, I've owned, I think the majority of my bikes have been two cylinder so far. Um, it's quite well balanced. I have to say for myself, a uh, bit niche, but the Boxer Twin is probably the one I would be the perfect aiming bike. towards. Wow, well, I didn't see that coming. For me, yeah, I know. It's a little bit of, uh, even I didn't see that coming. I've surprised myself there. Uh, but no, genuinely, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a split because it's on performance and the actual the feeling of it, I suppose. I do like a Boxer Twin. Um, in terms of making your heart sing and uh, and the noise and stuff like that, it would probably be a V-twin instead for me. Uh, mm -hmm. But either way, two cylinders, yeah. Power levels, what we're talking. What's, what's enough to have fun, but mm. not unnecessary? AKA, that's a double we negative, tend to, isn't it? <laughs> what's the necessary We tend to amount? dance around sort of 75 horsepower, I'd say, is my kind of benchmark, right? 75 horsepower up to about 105-ish. Do you have a preference on torque? Yeah, not really fast. If it's a twin, it's going to be pretty punchy anyway. I have to ask you for some more specifics on, on what would make a perfect bike. So, what is your favourite seat height for a road bike? <laughs> That's real particular. Yeah, I'm telling you. I don't me. know if I... It's, it's, it ain't a deal breaker for me, but I think probably anything under 800 mil, I'm going to say uh, seven, 790 is kind of a, a sweet spot for me. 790? Wow. Yeah, I think. See, height 790, what's the minimum amount of fuel it could carry for you to be content? Or, like, what's a good amount of fuel? <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, the more fuel it carries, the better, but... Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Yes and no, I think. Um, I had a Motocut CV7, which had, like, a 230-mile range on it. They got, like, a 20-litre... Like liter. liters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, to be honest, that was possibly too much because you notice the difference between it being full and being empty in terms of obviously how sort of fun it was to ride. Yeah. I think anything less than, I'm going to say 15 is kind of my benchmark. Having run out of fuel uh, more than once, I uh, I don't enjoy it. So, and, and also, you know, when you're on the motorway and you like, you pass a couple of services or like yeah. the exits for it and you're like, oh, shit this is me for the next 50 miles yeah. basically um yeah you want to know that you can at least get there so 15 liters sounds about mm, right to me okay styling what's your favorite genre uh a bit of a mix but i like me a single round headlight on the front that is kind of a must mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i like quite a kind of muscular tank and what i mean by that is it kind of it um pops out of the kind of the seat if you like there's a decent kind of hump and arch to it like it's kind of stanced and ready to go. I'm not overly fond of kind of, let's say Yamaha, Kawasaki, sort of straight line, straight edge. Suzuki as well is kind of uh, an offender in my mind of the modern look of bikes. I prefer it to look a little bit retro. Mm. What is what you consider like too heavy? Uh, yeah, I think I think sort of a lot of the bikes I've owned are like 190-ish. I think the Ducati the Scrambler, it's hard to tell in it because they're always, they're always lying about their weight. Yes. Um, so they're kind of, all of them will be like, oh, it's curb weight. Oh, this is without any liquids in it. Um, so yeah, like 175. I've owned a couple that have been like 170, 180. When you're telling like people your weight, do you quote curb or dry? <laughs> yeah, I quote uh, absent of fluids. <laughs> I'm just completely dry. Well, you're 60% um, water, aren't we, humans? <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah, so really, I'm only about six stone. Um, so no, I go for, uh, yeah, I've had a few bikes. So I've spanned between like 170 ish up to about 250, 260. I don't particularly enjoy a bike that's like 250 kilograms. So I'm going to say around 200 if I can get less than I would. Woo. Not bad, not bad. There's a purpose yeah. to this, by the way. Probably yeah. people listening might be thinking, where are you going with this? But there is a purpose. What tech features are now non-negotiable for you? Or is it the simpler, the better? Tech features. If I was buying a new bike, if, I'm, if someone is designing Tim's perfect bike, then I'm going to say cruise control, actually, and it, it's a little bit prissy, but I do want that as a non-negotiable. Especially if I'm getting a new bike, I want cruise control totally. on there. Because if I'm doing distance, like when you're selling motor, it's just boring as hell. And I think that's, well, ABS and switchable, switchable ABS, switchable traction control. Usually, if I can get it, I will absolutely take it. And then lastly, what would you say is an acceptable price point for a bike that hit all these, you know, keeping in mind you're buying it new, hits yeah. all these markers for you? I'm, I'm trying to guess the market, but I haven't bought, and I've, I've, well, firstly, I've never bought an actual brand spanking new bike, but yeah, I'm, I'm thinking they're around sort of eight, nine for this kind of See, middleweight. My reason for delving into this is because... I've got all the full specs now of the new Spark Pillar NATO 1. Looking at it, I, I don't think it looks like massively exceptional in any one area. You know, it's not going to be the one that gets all the headlines for like crazy new tech features or new engine design with some means of generating astronomical power figures. There's nothing phenomenal about it. And even the styling, just a little bit of an evolution of the 701 or the 401 they just updated. But I actually think. It hits a lot of these, a lot of these points. So, does this meet your perfect bike, or is this way off the mark for what you like? Well, my perfect bike is the Spark Pillinator one I just <laughs> just described, and it's it's pretty close on these. And yeah, what you've defined there is pretty similar. I'd go for a twin, probably. I like I really like a V twin, but this is a parallel twin, of course, the Spark Pillin, and it's got the uh, something like a four hundred and thirty five degree crank or something like that. It gives you 75 degree V twin vibes like the mm -hmm. Super Duke. Peak power, 105. Mm -hmm. You said 75. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Punchy. Well, I said it has to be at least 75, but oh. I was like up to 100 ish. Yeah. 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 Between that sort of margin for sure. They, let's say, muted the, they damped the power a little bit in the 790 Duke that it's based upon so they could limit it down to A2. But this bike, they just mm. don't seem to care about A2. I guess because they've got the <laughs> 401 Spark Pillin. It's already ready to go for that market. So it gets 105. Seat height, 820, which I would argue, for me, is far preferable. But, you know, personal taste. It's just okay. 790 mil. I find, like, quite small. Like, we're out riding the CB500 the other day. Isn't that 795? Mm. It's quite a titchy bike. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Oh, Close you do? The ground. Okay. You feel the speed. Feel the rush of speed. No, I might have been off on that one, to be honest. I think like 800, for me, like 830 is is what I would consider tall. And it's also dependent on kind of the seat. And if we're talking about this one, then that puts me in mind of the Vipolin 701, which to me feels kind of tall. You kind of like you sort of sat on that tall seat that you get out for family occasions when you're having a meal around the table and you've, you've run out of mm. chairs. You've got, you know, stool and you're sort of dangling your legs off it. Uh, not particularly feeling comfortable. It's also got about as much cushioning in it as well. So the 701's never been what I would consider a comfortable bike. So I'd prefer it to be just a smidge lower. Yeah, I can't remember what it is. Shall we have a quick look? 830. So yeah, this is 820. I think that makes it... Okay. I, I, you know, what I was thinking when I looked at the specs is like, some of these retro bikes can be a little bit too low for some reason. I don't know if they gear them towards newer riders mm. who might be taken by the looks and... That sort of thing. But yeah, sometimes they don't feel like proper bikes. Whereas 820, right in the sweet spot. Not too tall, not too short. So it's another big mm -hmm. tick for me. Goldilocks zone, nice. Yeah, 14 litre fuel tanks, a litre short of your, you know, oh. dream situation. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's actually not too bad on fuel as well, that engine, despite the fact that it's loads of fun. Styling, you mm -hmm. said single headlight, tick. Muscular tank, I think it ticks that box. It is yeah, yeah. under... Uh, 200 kilos i think it's 195 it's based mm. upon like i say the 790 duke but it's seven kilograms heavier than the duke i think that's because it's got a bit more body work and it's meant to look a bit more scramblery mm. uh, i'm not sure if 
ABS and traction control are switchable. They probably are, but you might have to pay I mean, for the dynamic yeah, pack, which true, is yeah, yeah. on top. I'd say KTM and Husqvarna do tend to throw that in as like, what do they call it? Like supermoto. They, it does have supermoto is, ABS right? as standard, which switches off the there rear you so you can stamp on the brake yeah. pedal. <laughs> it does also have the option of cruise control, although again, you need to pay for the dynamic pack. Sorry. Mm. And you can, I don't think you can buy it separately. You have to buy it as part of the pack. And if my memory serves me correctly on the KTMs, it's five, six, seven hundred quid, something like that. Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I have to double check that. Mm. But it's not a hundred pounds, let's say, for the dynamic pack. Sure. So that's a bit frustrating. Price wise, they mm. say it's going to be ten four nine nine available from June this year. Let's have a little look. You haven't even seen it yet, have you? Let me share my screen and show you a couple of pictures. I've seen a couple because I think they've been doing some press stuff on it, and uh, they took it out with snow tires on it didn't they and just went out blatting around some frozen landscape which i thought looked very cool i mean that was the aim is to make it look really cool yeah i think it's to try and sell the kind of flat track vibe yeah looking at it now you've seen the pics yeah worth 10499 thinking about the specs as well is this kind of like relative to the rest of the market it sounds like it might be right it's not overpriced compared to its mm. rival well, it's two and a half thousand pounds more than a 790 oh. Duke. So you're getting a lot of the same bike for a lot less money. Yeah, that is punchy. But then the looks on the 790 Duke are just not great <laughs> yeah, for me. Are bad enough that it's worth two grand. And you get 10 more horsepower for this, one. for this one. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. So the thing is, because obviously they've got the press materials, right? And they've got mm. it all Husqvarna sticker bombed. Yeah. And you can get an idea of the silhouette, but weirdly it does actually do quite a good job of masking the overall design. So you can see those photos and you're like, I don't know whether I like this or not. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's too loud. So with this, you can actually see the sort of the shadows around that, that hunched kind of tank. Mm. And it's got those almost like sort of fins that come out on the side of it. And it's got that satin finish to it. And yeah, there is no question the Husqvarna design team, uh, brilliant at what they do it's it is a very pretty bike proportions are all good which is a really hard thing to get you know when you see sort of like mm. chinese imitations of certain bikes yeah slightly off. you can tell what the influence is and they're just off yeah exactly it's like you've kind of you're drawing it from memory <laughs> you're like yeah well it kind of looked like this but this one there is something that's millimeter perfect in terms of the design of it i mean just the fact that the exhaust on the back exactly meets the line of the tail section yes and then, you know, the headlight is the right kind of height for that tank where it just, the mm. tank leads you into the headlight and a tiny little fly screen on the front. It's, there's no question that is one of the prettiest bikes this year. I think it's going to be banging. Obviously, we've got a reserve judgment until we ride it, but you know kind of what you get in with yeah. it being so heavily based upon the Duke. It's interesting mm. they've really moved away from the sort of scrambler thing and more yes. towards flat track. Like you don't get spoke wheels anymore. You know, these are much more flat track style tires. Oh, mm. I just think it looks really, really good. Yeah. We're getting one for a few months as well, a semi long termer, but it will be later right. this year because they're not out until June. Not too far, you know, three months to wait. Mm. But yeah, I think for me, given just how good it looks in almost every area, good looking, mm-hmm. lightweight, mm-hmm. 100 horsepower, mm-hmm. talky twin, got all the bells and whistles, but you don't have to pay for them all if you don't want them. Yeah can get cruise control wp suspension's great mm-hmm. assume the husky brakes are going to be fine because they're produced by jay Duan. yeah 820 mil seat height i know yeah. i was saying that earlier you, you thought it was too specific but i think that's right in the sweet spot yeah probably i i want to i want to sit on this thing though i do think looking at that seat and knowing what their seats are generally like i think that one is pile inducing possibly <laughs> maybe that's a little too harsh. It's uh, Maybe it's more comfortable than the previous ones I've tried. What I will say, though, same sort of building on your kind of excitement with this one, is that I've ridden the 790 Duke, love that bike. There is no way this can't be a great performer because it's, you know, it's the same sort of platform and it looks way better. So, yeah, I'm very excited to ride that as well. Let's see. When we get hold of it, you should definitely come over and take it for a spin. Moving on, though, also a new bike this week that's just been announced is the brand new Triumph Rocket 3. Storm. Now, I don't know what you whether you thought it really needed an update, Tim, but here's the kind of general lowdown. Obviously, there's more detail mm. over on the main channel, but um, mm. it's basically the same bike, but they've given it about 50 more PS of power. Mm-hmm. So what's that gone from? It was 167 horsepower, I believe, and it's gone up to 182 or so. 
Okay. And then also, four more newton meters of peak torque. It was already the torquiest motorcycle engine on the market, the largest capacity at 2.5 liters. Mm. Now it's up to 225, so four more newton meters. And that's made at 4,000 RPM, so really low in the rev range. Mm. Did it really need it? Let's just discuss that for a moment. Is a bike that's already 165-ish horsepower, does it really need to go up to 180? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, more is better and most is best. Well, you, so You thought it was a bit slow? <laughs> yeah, I could have done with it. It didn't, it didn't really excite me. And the extra four newton meters is really going to make the difference. <laughs> no, I think either way, I, I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference in terms of actually getting out there and rinsing that throttle. I think it's going to be about as fast as the previous one, which is to say it's a really fast bike. It's very exciting to ride. Love it. And also, I, you've ridden one as well, obviously. I don't know whether you felt the same, but to me, it's kind of the Bugatti of bikes in that, yes, it's got you know more power than most bikes out there, and it can go very, very fast, but it also just wears it well. It doesn't feel, it just feels so secure at those speeds where if you mm. think of maybe a lighter bike where you'd you know, maximize that power to weight ratio, it might feel a little twitchy to say the least. And that one just felt composed, not scary or intimidating, even when you're doing stupid speeds. Yeah, totally. It's got a certain length to it, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> that I think makes it feel super stable and it's definitely mm. got a bit of heft to it which uh, mm. makes it feel super planted. Look, I don't know. I was just thinking about it. And yeah, I think power and the most torquey bike and giving it more torque is always going to be quite headline grabbing. But I think that's probably the main intention. You've always got to give a bike a sort of mid cycle update to keep it fresh, keep selling them. Sure. And look at the spec on the rest of the bike. Mm. Top notch Brembo brakes. It's got a big four pop brake caliper on the rear as well. So there's not much you could do there. I think it has really good adjustable show suspension, so you couldn't really give it a lift in terms of chassis stuff. And then redeveloping anything fundamental about it, like the frame or anything like that, it's going to be too expensive for what is ultimately, you know, a fairly, one assumes, development-intensive kind of bike. Mm. And so really probably squeezing a bit more power and torque out of it is the sort of headline change that they needed to make it sound more exciting than the previous one and like it's moved on. But without really having to do much, I mean, they did say they didn't even change anything inside right. the engine physically. Right. It's just, yeah, yeah. it's like an ECU update. So in theory, you could get your old bike remapped if you want oh, someone I didn't you. ask him that. It's a very good point, yeah. mate. I did not ask. I was on the mm. kind of briefing call. Oh, one other thing they did change as well is they've given it lighter wheels by a kilo or two between the two of them. Okay. And of course, with wheels being rotating and unsprung, they're saying that's going to have a big effect on the handling or, mm. you know, more of an effect on the handling than if you removed a kilo or two from elsewhere on the bike. So, mm. you know, maybe that'll, that'll work. I don't think you've seen a pic of it yet, have you? So let's have a little quick look at this one as well and to get what you think on the looks. Mm. Ooh, we've got to choose the best picture of it. Yeah, that yeah, it's pretty tasty. Have they changed the tail section on that, or is it the same? Uh, gotta say, mate, they really haven't changed a lot. No, it's blacked out. I mean, that looks cool. Yeah, the wheels, you can see they're slightly different, right? Yeah, actually, to be fair, uh, it just looks a bit meaner, I suppose. It just looks, um, I mean, it doesn't look too dissimilar from it just being kind of a very tasteful custom job on it, really. Yeah, I know what you mean. Blacked out on the exhaust headers, on the hardware. Yeah. Blacked out wheels. I like that new wheel shape. Mm. The tank as well, you can see the top half's blue there, bottom yeah, half yeah, black. Yeah. And that flips on the GT where the top right, half is black. Okay. The bottom half, you can choose from blue, black, or red. Yeah, um, real so nice. Yeah, I think it looks quite cool. I mean, as far as like a, an actual a factory produced bike, that's um, got to be in there for one of the prettiest made this year as well. Pretty fantastic. Yeah. I, I mean, it's always looked like you say, like a prototype, basically, that's somehow slipped through the net yeah, and made yeah. it onto this dealer floor. But I think that's the, you know, the summary of it. New wheels, new paint, black hardware, bit more power. Yeah. And almost certainly done it just to kind of keep it fresh and give everyone something exciting to talk about with a bit more mm. punch. But still, you know, we'll give it a go, won't we? Try and get one for a spin. Oh, yeah. And uh, see if it does make a difference, those ex extra 15 horses at the top. 
You go first, mate. You can get on it and pin it and see how fast it goes. <laughs> Thank you. So I bury it in a wall, you don't get a chance to ride it. Yeah. That's not the plan, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I've got this interesting one-off motorcycle news that just popped up the other day. I don't think many people covered it, but it was a new finance deal from Ducati, specifically on the Scrambler. Let's talk about that for starters. Why would they be doing a finance deal just on the Scrambler? Do you reckon they're not selling that well since they updated it? We rode all three. Yeah. And I thought they were pretty good and a good continuation of the previous gen Scramblers. So it was the full mm. throttle, the night shift, the icon. But yeah, it, it sort of seems like they're trying to get people in the door to consider them. But yeah. I mean, I thought they were good, didn't you? Yeah, I think they're really good. It doesn't always translate, I suppose, in terms of sales. I think that would be my assumption as well, right? If they're doing a deal like this, maybe it's because they're not shifting as quickly as they would want them to maybe also because the scrambler is a sub brand right so it's it's like its own specific little pocket of yeah. Ducati. so maybe they're kind of run slightly differently i don't know but interesting yes that is true maybe someone else makes up the pricing strategy and that's why it's specifically for them but yeah it's surprise if it's not going particularly well because you owned the previous gen wasn't it pretty much of the icon yeah. mm. And I think when you went and did the press trip, you said you felt like it was quite a good evolution or improvement, but with pretty much the same fundamental feel and soul. Mm. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I stand by that. The biggest update was that it was ride by wire and it was smoother on the throttle, really. And it felt more modern, more refined, because the other one did feel a little bit raw, I suppose. And some people really like that. Um, if you're riding for city stuff and shorter trips, that actually is more of a frustration than if you were doing you know longer stuff where or totally. more dynamic stuff where really you can just pin it so um it definitely felt better to me but i have to admit i haven't seen an awful lot of them on the roads if that's any kind of indication anecdotally but um do see a lot of other competitors such as i don't know what i put in there really royal enfield honda yamaha triumphs try yeah yeah fair amount of them bonnies yeah mostly it'll be their heritage yeah for sure well, the finance deal that I'm talking about anyway, I and mean, we're all familiar with paying cash, one hopes, and PCP, where you're sort of um, paying installments and then usually there's a balloon payment at the end and you decide whether to pay it or not. This one is a 50-50 deal. So you pay 50% of the price of the bike up front. So the icon, I believe, is 9995. So you've got to walk into the dealer with five grand. Mm. They give you the brand new icon interest free then no monthlies or anything you can go back to the dealer two years later and decide whether to pay the rest of it and that will obviously give you the bike so another five grand or give the keys back and then it says and move on to another brand new model so i assume you use that deposit that you put down the first half of the value of the bike to put down as a deposit on a, another bike or something and then you have to give the bike back and they just sell it on mm. but basically what you're kind of faced with is is that a good deal like would you rather not just put a one or two grand deposit and pay monthlies in a traditional pcp like how is this and I, I, well actually i know how this is more enticing mm. it's zero interest so when you pay at the end there's been no interest building up over two years yeah but does it sound like the sort of thing that would make you think, gosh, you've got to ru rush down there and put five grand down on a new scrambler? It sounds a little too complicated to me, to be honest. Like PCP, the, the reason that does so well is because it is it sounds so simple mm. and that's how they kind of net you in. And then obviously once you're in, in that ecosystem, it's it's never ever, isn't it? It's like you never own the bike, but you sort of in three years time... Just they keep using it as a deposit yeah, for the next exactly, one. exactly, for the next bike and you've always got something fresh. But... I I know a few people who've done that and one or two of them kind of regret it and would prefer to have just bought a bike. So it sounds a little weirdly sort of higher risk in my head, but I guess not. Um, I don't know. Tricky to tell that one. How about you? It's funny that you say that it it's too complicated because in a way it's simple. Yeah, Zero interest, no, yeah. <laughs> five grand now, and then yeah. in two years, five grand. But yeah. PCP, you've got to be thinking about residual values and all yeah. that kind of thing and like how much deposit do you put down and therefore how does that affect your monthlies and yeah. um, how long are you going to run the deal for as well and again that's going to affect your monthlies but also mm. how much interest accrues. Way more complicated in many ways but mm. ultimately I think what you're saying is it comes down to that simple idea of how much am I paying each month for this bike yeah. basically. You're yeah. kind of like renting it. Yeah, it's more like renting exactly. 
I'm not sure it sounds that tempting. I, the, the reason that I don't think it sounds that tempting is because I think after owning a bike for two years, mm. maybe with a PCP, if you've got a couple of grand, two, three, four grand, it depends on how much of it you, yeah. you know, you're paying off. It might be tempting just to buy it and keep it for another year or yeah, sell yeah. it on or whatever. But to have stumped up five grand in the first place, and mm-hmm. then two years down the line, when the honeymoon period with the bike is well and truly over, mm-hmm. to then give another five grand cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, the rate at which you change bikes, mate. Yeah. <laughs> also, considering that it will have depreciated because you are the first buyer, and that's the biggest kind of loss, if you like, on any vehicle is once you've rolled it off the forecourt, right? So you're going to give yeah. five grand, but you're definitely not going to get that back in terms of the resale on it. And fair enough, if you've been sensible enough to go, oh, I'm going to put squirrel away a little bit every single month and I'm going to set up my own little savings account and then that'll pay off my bike in two years' time. No one's going to do that. I mean, if you were sensible and you did, then great, you've got something with 0% interest on it. Um, But I just don't see most people doing that, to be honest. Yep, so overall, not sure, but as always, audience, especially if you're on the YouTube version of this video, which is on the Full Tank Podcast YouTube channel, let us know in the comments what you think. Would you go for that 50-50 deal? Or do you think you'd rather just pay cash or pay even PCP, which I know a lot of people are not fans of, but let us know what you think. Anyway, moving on to comment of the week. I thought we'd take a bit of a flavor from our video from the London Motorcycle Show, which did really, really well, actually. Still getting loads of views as we speak. Uh, so we'll be millionaires soon, Tim. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, let's pick over some of the comments. And the thing that really seemed to get people engaged with that video was when we were talking about the Nortons and the new uh, limited edition bikes that they've done to kind of celebrate the history of Norton. And there was some in this 588 paint job, they called it, which was sort mm. of inspired by the rotary bikes and race bikes of the past. And there, I think they were 40 or 50 grand, were they, for those, the V4S I uh, seem to remember. I seem to remember some horrific maths from me and not remembering what you'd said for price. Yeah, but it was around four, forty-five, fifty. I think it's forty yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just have a look at some of the the comments here. So, fun with AJ said, love the look of the Nortons, but honestly, they're digging a grave for themselves yet again with those prices. If they could give us the same bikes, but for sub fifteen grand, they'd be selling like hotcakes. Handmade is not what the majority of riders care about. Richard Casey said, too bad Norton can't give us a bike in the price range of a new Triumph T120, which is what? I think they're about 12 or 13 grand, maybe. Mm. Simon Collins, I totally agree. Commando should be ballpark around the same as a Thruxton. LimeWire said, Harley did this. History repeating himself. And Martin and Paisley Pryor said, they think they are Envy Augusta, uh, which is interesting because we (laughs) talked in the last episode about Brian Gillen, the chief. Uh, engineer or something like that moving yeah. from Envy Augusta over to Norton so there is yeah. obviously some compatibility between the two <laughs> brands there on the flip side mate just to give a, a flavour of the other side of the argument before I get your thoughts mm. Les the Great said that Norton V4SV with the, with the stripes rather is a work of art and we mm. all know works of art can you know this isn't his comment by the way this is my thought works of art can go from <laughs> uh, you know well, up to way beyond what you pay for a motorcycle. Sure, so yeah. if you do see it as a uh, thing of beauty, then maybe mm. it is worth it. And then, but then Ian BQ7GP says, the young riders haven't any idea of the experience of riding a basic twin with no rider rays that feels like an old bike. The chassis, frame and paint is far superior to anything else. And it's now far better engine wise than the original ones. It seems to keep its value well like Harley's and won't rust like Harley's that cost a lot. The 588 on the track was amazing. And the Crichton CR700 is a rocket on steroids that even Guy Martin said, FL. <laughs> you did the math there. <laughs> Look, I think that's just a general appreciation post for uh, general Norton vibes, including those 588 mm. race bikes. Mm. Um, I don't know, mate. A little bit of both, but it seems like most people are a little bit uh, perturbed by the mm. price point. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, it seems the weight is kind of that way. And generally, if you speak to people, those are the responses you get the most. Mm-hmm. Oh, people saying, oh, that's too expensive. And yeah, they may well have a point, but that's for Norton to worry about. Because if they are too expensive, then they just won't sell. And then it's just a, an unsustainable business model. In terms of the actual bike itself, 
Um, we we both like the the quality of it, the feel of it, the fact that it is unique, and it really is unique. I mean, having ridden a lot in that field, um, there are none. The retros. That, yeah, there are none that feel or sound like the Norton. So if you do want that, then there is only one place to go for it. Uh, and like you know, um, was it Ian said? It has that feel of an old bike, but the higher quality of it being new. Because if, if you do get an old bike, you're probably going to be uh, wrenching Tinkering. on it with a spanner. Yeah, quite a lot, aren't you? So, um, yeah, it's a fair point. It, they are expensive, but um, how many times can you go sort of around that argument, really? I think almost in a way, because they are meant to be exclusive, if most people are saying they're too expensive, they're probably mm. getting it about right because the mm. people they want to buy them want to feel like they're getting something that's too expensive for a lot of people. Yeah. And, you know, I've thought about this in the past, like when we were at the show, should we just constantly be going on about how they're expensive? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, Imagine we went out of the show and we were just sort of like, oh, that's a bit pricey. Oh, that's, uh, that's well, punching. <laughs> like on every But bike. in a way, like... That is what they want, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, they'd make cheaper bikes. Like they, they, yeah. they want regular people at the show like us or people who look at bikes sure. to think it's out of reach. It's uh, aspirational, isn't it? It's, it has to be somewhat aspirational. Otherwise, it doesn't have the same kind of allure. It loses some mystique. Do you remember the Atlas or not prototype? I'll send you a link in case you don't. But it was a few years back. I went to the London Motorcycle yeah. Show and they were showing this. It was in the bad old days of Norton, you know, uh, yeah. before this big change of ownership and everything. But um, regardless of what you think of the company, mm. uh, th this did look really interesting, I thought. Yes. It was uh, intended to be at a much more affordable price point. It was a parallel twin 650 that was sort of derived from... Mm you know, chopping off two cylinders of their V4 engine. Yes. And it had a bit of a scramblery vibe to it, even though it was still, you know, it still looked like a Norton. So I thought it looked really interesting, but it got yeah. canned. Yeah. And I wonder if part of that is just, you know, the new owners, let's say, realizing that they want to really push into that more premium side and keep it like that. Because they're a huge manufacturer, aren't they? That make yeah. bikes in India and whatnot. So they, they can do the broad appeal, cheap stuff. The more they pull Norton down into that market, Fair. the less the, you know, they've got this asset that is like this super premium, mm. prestigious brand. Mm. But still a shame. Looks cool, didn't it? It looked really cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously we can't comment on how it rode or even what it sounded like. I don't even think they were sort of starting them or anything. It was just a concept, but it did look, I mean, looking at the picture again now, that does kind of break my heart because I really did want to see that in the flesh. Uh, mm. and get to ride it and that is the kind of bike you know depending on where it's sort of sat in the market i think a lot of people would be tempted to buy it's really really yeah <laughs> i don't know how do you feel i mean I, i'm kind of gutted about that one to be honest it looks almost custom like yeah everything looks like it's been hand crafted and yeah um i don't know maybe if that's one of the problems with producing it but Possibly, it yeah. certainly looked impressive mm. Uh, and a 650 twin could be good fun. Look very mm -hmm. lightweight. Uh, so yeah, I would have liked to have seen that one out on the road. I think there were two versions of it as well. There was slightly different spec. One had like a little fly screen and stuff. I can't yeah. quite remember the exact difference, but um, yeah, I saw them in the flesh at the show, like I say, and look fantastic. It is a yeah. shame, mm. but I just don't look, I'm going to say, I think probably the price is, reasonably justified from what i've seen on the nortons if you accept that there is an element of exclusivity and they're a small build uh, and i just don't think it's going to change that's how i'd round that off after comment of the week we've got to move on to bike of the week and mate i saw this one on one of the i think it's, i saw it on ride apart <laughs> but it's the new is you know a little bit more about films than me i feel like mm. especially in this sort of genre mm. are you a mad max fan or not yeah, actually, I am. Yeah, yeah, no, I, did I like loved that it one. as well. Mm. But is Furiosa a sequel? Uh, I think it's a prequel, actually. So it's this, it's the origins of the character Furiosa, um, who was Charlie's Theron in um, the last one. Mate, this is why we came to you for this. <laughs> I knew you'd know. Prequel, obviously. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, Chris Hemsworth is in it, and they've released a picture of his motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> You know, before when we were talking about my perfect bike, <laughs> <laughs> this is it. I just hadn't seen this. Yeah, that's got that's wormed its way into my heart. 
Well, <laughs> you know, with Bike of the Week, I always like to celebrate the weird and wonderful. Yeah. And I think this definitely counts uh, because it's got this radial engine. I don't know how many cylinders that is. It looks like it might be about eight, uh, mm. but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Um, but in researching this a little bit, I was just looking around. What What is a radial engine motorcycle? Like, is that a thing? Yeah. There's a surprising amount of them on Google Images, on YouTube. I've just never seen anything like that before in my life. Yeah. But it's a thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, what on earth will that sound like? Uh, like a plane? Yeah, loud, <laughs> I guess. Actually, yeah. Do you know what? Probably quite a lot like a plane. You're probably quite right there. I think I've seen, um, I think it might have been a Fortnite video. It sounds like the sort of thing that was. Where, then they used to, they, they had at one stage put a motor in a wheel. Um, again, it was oh, a... Right rotary type one and it was it's petrol powered in essence do you mean radial by the way sorry radial yeah what did i say (laughs) rotary which i nearly did as well different thing (laughs) in it rotary is the triangular thing yes yes it is yeah yeah uh which they have put in bikes i believe as well but no so the the radial they i think they've put them in uh, a wheel actually before now which was a horrific design idea um, but not too dissimilar, I suppose, in concept to kind of like the way an electric motor works, where it's kind of like uh, loads of little pushes around the whole sort of circumference of mm. the wheel. Science with Tim, I'm going to be way off on that one, definitely. But you know what I mean? Like it's quite, uh, it's quite an interesting sort of concept. I, does, do you know if this actually does work, though? Is this an actual starting riding motorcycle or is this kind of like a skin over something else? <laughs> There's like a 125 engine hidden somewhere in there. I, from looking at it uh, and from looking at other radial engined choppers that you can see on, like I say, Google Images or YouTube, there's plenty of them. It looks accurate. Um, the way that the, I oh, guess mate. it might be a, dr- <laughs> yeah. what? Sorry, I've just typed it in. My God, there's loads of them. Yeah. Yeah. Radial engine motorcycles. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at that picture of the bike that he sat on, uh, where the drive comes out the side of the engine there. It looks very similar to the sort of layout of a lot of these other bikes. So I do think it probably is legit, which is really quite impressive. I'd love to see it on the move. I can't wait to see it in the movie as well. That's going to be super cool. Yeah, yeah. But you've got to say, looking at the pictures, mate, there's some design compromises, aren't there? Because of the shape <laughs> of the engine. The rake of the fork, I think this could only really work in a chopper yes. because the yeah. forks have to be <laughs> super raked out to the point where they're nearly parallel to the ground so it probably doesn't really turn mm. the fuel tank is curved around it because it's probably it probably absolutely drinks fuel and they can only get a big capacity fuel tank if they wrap it around the engine have mm-hmm. you seen the handlebars as well they also have to wrap around the yeah. fuel tank which wrap mm-hmm. around the engine mm-hmm. and then the sump guard which <laughs> If you bottom out this bike, even on a yeah. speed bump or something, which is possible because <laughs> a speed bump would fit between that front wheel and the engine. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's catastrophic, isn't it? That's like <laughs> cylinder heads <laughs> bent or yeah. snapped off or yeah. especially a good clip. Yeah. So we're saying not the most practical bike, I guess. Uh, and also, if we're th- talking sort of like case specific, where this is like desert post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, not the smoothest of roads out there. It's got little sort of semi nobblies on it. You're probably going to find or encounter quite a few little bumps and undulations in the road. Yeah, one would imagine so. Yeah, in which case, yeah, you're going to take out half your bank of cylinders and <laughs> just destroy the thing. But he doesn't look like he's too concerned with practicality. Got a nice little cape on as well. Almost looks like Thor, in actual fact. I know he obviously <laughs> is Thor, but he almost looks like some sort of steampunk variation alternate universe the version theme. is it yeah. a parallel yeah it's like a universe thing um i can already imagine there's going to be some comments about practicality of it like oh the valve valve clearance check is going to take <laughs> at least you can access time. most of them like, you know half of them you can get access to pretty quickly. <laughs> um but it has to be up there with with one of the wackiest uh movie motorcycles i'd say yeah best and- possibly uh, what, you're movie a motorcycles? Bike fan, aren't you? Yeah, big fan of the bat bikes. I have to say. Uh, so no, this doesn't quite pip them for me. But in terms of our the bikes that we've shown uh, for bike of the week, I think this is way up there. This is there with that forty eight cylinder for sure. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. 
or of course watching, which you can do over on YouTube if you search for the Full Tank Podcast. If you do fancy some sweet visuals with your next episode of the Motor News, and when we'll be back with another set of the latest and best motorcycle stories on the internet. Many thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.